Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. The best uh, free uh, supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But if you don't have a uh, paid supplement, I highly recommend the Kaplan QBank. With my Guru 10 discount code at checkout, you can get it for about uh, $58. I think it's $58.10 uh, for that commercial. Uh, Kaplan allows me to give you free look on Kaplan content. We'll help you with any explication request from any vendor. Just easier it's Kaplan because we can pull it up backstage. By way of reminder, you can always in the channel search bar, just put accrued interest and all the things we have available come up. I've done this three, four times with different requests. So, uh, you know, here we go again. I think this is a different question, but it's pretty similar, right? All right. So uh, let's look at this one. A corporate bond pays interest. J, J15. So that's a J and J bond. Bonds pay semi-annually. So the issuer agrees to pay on January 15th and July 15th. That's how it'll be. Either J and J or F and A or M and, uh, M and O, A, A and O, excuse me, M and S, whatever the case may be. An investor purchasing these bonds on Friday, April 17th. So that's the trade date. That's the great day we agreed to terms would pay accrued interest. So very testable know that under the Uniform Practice Code, which standardizes practices, secondary trading practices in the securities industry, the buyer pays the seller the dollar amount of the accrued interest. So I'll play seller here. And I say, listen, when you get a check on July 15th, you know, that represents the entire six month time frame, and you didn't owe the bonds, own the bonds for the six entire uh, time frame. You know, I owe them, owned, owned the bonds for uh, half of January, basically, all of February, all of March, and part of April. So let's just right now figure out how much of that check you're going to get belongs to me, the seller. And that way, when you get the check, you can keep it. And you say, well, you know, I'll pay you when I get it. I go, no, no, no. This is a transaction, not a relationship. All right. So when the uh, bonds, it says here, were traded, uh, excuse me, uh, on Friday, April 17th, right? So that's the trade date. That's when we agree to terms. That's not when ownership changes hands. So these still aren't the buyer's bonds. These are still my bonds, the seller. I own the bonds on the 18th and the 19th because Saturday and Sunday are not business days. A business day is any day the New York Stock Exchange is open. So Monday would be T plus uh, one, and that's the 20th. And then settlement, that's when ownership changes hands, would be Tuesday, April 21st. Now, be careful, RTFQ, read the full question, because sometimes the question will say the bond settled or they traded. Here it says they were traded. So now we need to figure that out. Okay, so there's two methods now to calculate the number of days. One way is what I call the long method, right? You literally just count. And I say, okay, when I got paid on January 15th as the seller, that was up to but not including January 15th. So I've been paid for 14 days in January. There are 30 days of the Uniform Practice Code. We didn't want our high talent men and women to have to remember nursery rhymes and knuckle humps about how many days have September. So for corporates and munis, every month has 30 days, which means that first month is either going to be a 30 or 16. That's the only number that can go into that first month. Again, when I got paid on January 15th, it was for up to, but not including the 15th. So I've been paid 14 days in January. Every month has 30 days, 16. You owe me for all February 30 days as a buyer. I am playing seller. You owe me for all of March. And you owe me for up to, but not including settlement. It makes sense that you don't include settlement because that's when ownership changes hands, right? So boom, 96 days is the answer to the question. We do have a shortcut that I'd like to share with you. And the shortcut would be to take the settlement date, 421. So if you want to use the shortcut, you're going to take settlement. And you're going to subtract the last time the bonds paid interest, which in this case was January 15th. And this is just an easier way to do it, less likely to make arithmetic mistakes. So one from four is three months. 15 from 21 is six days. Every month has 30 days. That's another way to get to the answer here, which is 96 days. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. Uh, remember, inch by inch. Your Series 7 is a cinch, yard by yard. Your Series 7 is hard. And I will see you for the next explication request.